We do have Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, uh, former uh, number two, head of policy, Department of Treasury, former Wall Street Journal uh, editor, best-selling author, and frequent contributor here to this radio show. He also writes a syndicated column multiple times weekly for Creator Syndicate, and he's with us for the next 20 minutes. I wanted to get his expert take on little Timmy Geithner, Banker Gate, uh, and uh, see if he agrees with Judge Napolitano and others that this could be an indictable offense uh, ordering the New York Fed that he headed in 2008, uh, their lawyers ordering AIG not to reveal who was getting the money, namely his former boss at Goldman Sachs, who was currently Treasury Secretary at the time, and of course that is uh, Henry Paulson. And now the Securities and Exchange Commission has declared that until 2018, these documents are secret. So uh, this is just amazing. Uh, Dr. Roberts, thanks for coming on with us. Sure, Alex. Good, good to have you here. Uh, Bankergate, I mean, how deep does it go? Well, Alex, I don't have any inside information on this. Um, and what I know I've you know, learned from reading. Things. Sir, can you, can you talk right into your phone? We're having trouble hearing you. Okay, let's see if I can push up the sound. How's that? That That's is better? really that is really good. But I mean, you were the head of policy, the father of Reaganomics. You headed up policy at the Treasury. I mean, you know these rules. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, here's what may have happened. Let me briefly run through it uh, without interruption, and then we can talk about sure. it. Sure. I think that what happened was uh, uh, AIG had a whole bunch of. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Goldman Sachs had a lot of AIG risk. And it had taken various steps, and uh, some of it was hedged with uh, credit default swaps, uh, in which other banks had uh, promised to reimburse Goldman Sachs if, if AIG uh, defaulted or went under. Now, when the uh, AIG risk were paid out a uh, hundred cents on the dollar, of course the risks weren't that great, so there was no need to pay off the risk 100 cents on the dollar. Uh, <clears throat> when that happened, of course, Goldman Sachs uh, did okay. Uh, but when they, when Geithner announced the uh, AIG bailout, he said publicly that the bailout would allow the government to liquidate AIG. So that made everybody think AIG was going to Fail. So what that meant was the value of the credit default swaps that Goldman Sachs had uh, from banks as protection against AIG risk, they skyrocketed. And so Goldman Sachs apparently sold them at some massive profit. And only Goldman Sachs knew that AIG wasn't going to fail. So it looks like it's a form of insider trading, of whether Geithner uh, enabled it on purpose or just through not thinking. Uh, we don't know, but what it does show is that uh, Goldman Sachs is out for every dime it can get. And uh, I would imagine we're not going to find out about it any more than we've been able to find out about anything else. Because uh, we don't control the government. Uh, you know who controls the government, the banksters, the military security complex, uh, APEC, the insurance industry, uh, not Congress, not us. So we're unlikely to find out, and I doubt anything will, will happen as a consequence. So that's my take. But that's the problem here, is that we've got Geithner, who was heading up the New York Fed. For those that don't know, that really sets the policy for the holding company uh, known as the Federal Reserve. And then he's got his former boss over at Treasury, Paulson, who said he got a waiver from Treasury from himself to give himself personal bailout money. And we have Geithner, we have uh, all of them before Congress uh, saying over and over again, of course, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke saying, I won't tell you where the $500 billion, just one portion of this money, 
uh, went. And so that's clearly their policy is to keep it secret. Who gets the bailout money? Who gets the free ride? Who gets to loot people? And so then to have Geithner, who was the head of the New York Fed, that it, and they admit the New York Fed lawyers instructed AIG to keep it secret, to say that Geithner wasn't setting the policy, that's like saying Al Capone uh, wasn't involved in whiskey running in Chicago in 1924. I mean, it's just it's, it's like saying Hitler had no knowledge of what was happening in, in, in the Nazi party. Well, Alex, I hate to say this, but... As far as we know, the whole bailout was a scam. Because, you know, immediately following the bailout, all the firms that were supposed to be threatened and, and were going to bring down the world financial system, they're all paying out six and seven figure bonuses to every member, to every employee. So the whole thing may have been a scam, just like weapons of mass destruction, Iranian nukes, or any of these fabricated uh, domestic uh, terrorist bomb plots. The whole thing may have been a scam. And Congress, stupidly, gave them the money without any controls. So what do you think Congress can do about it? They can't do anything, even if they were inclined, because they're also, their, their election funds, their campaign funds, are dependent on the banksters. So the banks own them, along with... Uh, the uh, military security complex, APAC, the members of, of the government are owned. They're not independent. They don't represent us. And you can't expect that they're going to act against the people that own them. They're, in effect, they're slaves. They're well, slaves certainly. to the powerful interest groups that fund them. Well, certainly and the they whole... provide for their security. If they lose an election, they get a job. Well, Dr. Roberts, certainly the whole thing is a scam. I mean, we have the McClatchy newspaper reports with the internal Goldman Sachs documents, how they were planning the whole housing implosion while telling everybody to invest in it, and, and then they got out. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this is clear evidence of them saying, oh, we didn't want to make this secret. I had no knowledge it was secret when they're publicly saying their policy is to make it secret. It's such an insult to everyone's intelligence. Yeah, but I know, I agree with you, Alex. Uh, it shows the extraordinary corruption of the government. When I was in the government, there was, of course, some corruption, but not this level, not just complete, total corruption. And in those days, uh, if there was corruption, the people who were corrupt were in danger and often were found out and held accountable. Now that's gone. There's not going to be any accountability for any of this. And and we're never going to know because they're not going to tell us. We can only try to piece it together the way I just did for you and the and the listeners. And I can't swear that's correct, but I think that's what happened. Well, we know they're lying and we know the sky's the limit. So what comes next? Just I mean, will, will they just put gold crowns on and declare themselves kings or they don't need to because they are kings. They exactly. Don't have to say, "Hey, look, I'm the king." <clears throat> so they, in effect, are, and we, in effect, are, are their slaves. Look, Alex, uh, look at the health care debate. Notice how concerned the government is, both Congress and the White House, that we can somehow find a way to pay for health care. I mean, we can't have health care unless we can pay for it. They never say that about their wars or about their bank bailouts. The question of, oh, we can't do this unless we can pay for it, never comes up. So the corporate welfare never... Do with helping the people, oh, they can't afford that.